You've managed to click on part one of a three-part video tutorial series that will hopefully expand your model building knowledge and skill set. In this series, we'll be building a training helmet and an X-Wing pilot helmet from the kit parts you see here. Part one of the series will review the steps required to build the base helmet. In part two, we'll be building this helmet into a fully finished, wearable, adjustable Jedi training helmet. In part three, we'll produce Luke's Red 5 helmet and show some of the other variations and opportunities for custom helmets. The training helmet kit is comprised of two thermal formed helmet shells. These are formed from extremely robust, thick 0.125 gauge polystyrene. Also included are four button tabs for detail, four metal stud details, a vacuform mohawk end cap, a resin cast end cap inset panel, two mounting bricks, the vacuform blast shield, a strip of polystyrene, and a full set of color decals. The X-Wing pilot helmet kit omits the blast shield and small round details and replaces them with a chin cup shell, tinted visor, visor slip cover, microphone piece, spacer tabs, and alternate decal sets. So let's get started building the main helmet from these kit parts. The easiest and fastest way to trim vacuform plastic is with these orange handled cutting shears found at Home Depot. If you don't have the hand strength, you can use a Dremel with the cutoff wheel. Just be sure to use gloves and goggles when using dangerous equipment. Once the outer shells are trimmed to the edges, you can clean the edges and refine them on a belt sander, showing here. Trim the helmet shells short at the mohawk area. Leave, say, one inch of a material. There are options for making the helmet smaller for smaller heads or larger for larger ones. Locate the three plastic square tabs. These are essentially spacers. Glue the tabs at the front, middle, and rear of one side of a helmet shell. Mate the two halves together now and glue the plastic spacer tabs to the opposite side using either super glue or hot glue. Trim the styrene mohawk plate to fit and glue onto the helmet in small stages, paying close attention to keeping it straight. Use a hot air gun to bend the excess strip flat to the helmet. It doesn't take very much heat to bend the plastic. I advise practicing a few times on some scrap plastic. Secure the end down with glue and trim flush with a Dremel and or a belt sander. It isn't completely necessary, but you can mix some Bondo and spread it across the interior seam line. This will give the helmet a bit more rigidity and will also add a bit more weight if that's desired. If you do this step, use ABS cement on the area where the Bondo meets the plastic. This will molecularly adhere the materials together for a permanent bond. There is a regular sized mohawk end cap and an extra large sized end cap. Use whichever fits better, depending on how you sized your helmet at the beginning assembly stages. Trim the mohawk end cap to fit and install the end set panel for detail. To make the visor fit flush to the interior, fill the hollow space on the underside of the mohawk cap using this curved panel. Please note, if you're careful in your assembly, you won't have to paint your helmet whatsoever. Just clean it up with some acetone and it's ready to take paint. Use automotive edge trim to line the helmet as shown. Now you can add your earpieces. Now let's take a moment to talk about the helmet interior. I'm going to show you a few variations here. The easiest way to line your helmet is using some foam padding. Use hot glue and install the foam in layers until you achieve a comfortable fit. If you want to go with an ultra deluxe helmet interior, there are two optional additions. One is this thermal formed curved interior hard shell. Trim to fit and hot glue to the interior. The second option to make the interior ultra deluxe involves using this specialty contoured foam helmet liner. Hot glue it into the interior and segment as necessary to achieve a custom fit. This really makes the helmet come alive and is quite an impressive feature. Your base helmet is finished. It's strong, it's durable, it's got a good heft to it because of the weight of the plastic and bondo. It's also flexible at the bottom, so if you have a larger head, 
you can flex the helmet while putting it on. From this point, you can take this helmet in many directions. You're in control now. Click on the left link to view the Training Helmet Build-Up Tutorial. Click on the right link for the X-Wing Helmet Variations. I hope this tutorial served to encourage and advance your building skills. Remember to have fun and keep those hands busy.